morning, everyone. I'm Zaina Anwar, um, founding member of Musawa and the current uh, director of uh, Musawa and founding member of Sisters in Islam in Malaysia, if some of you are familiar with um, Sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And happy International Women's Day tomorrow. So I just want to give an early notice. <laughs> so really welcome all of you to this wonderful, very special event for all of us in Musawa. It's our coming out with our first, um, you know, original uh, thinking on women's rights in Islam and, you know, right to the jugular vein of the issue of male authority over women. <laughs> um, so this is a launch um, of Men in Charge, Rethinking Authority in Muslim Legal Tradition, and really a day of sharing, discussing the twin concepts of Kiwama and Wilaya. I hope by the end of the day, you're very familiar with that, um, which until today underpins the discriminatory legal framework governing Muslim family law and practice. We're privileged today to have with us nine, one via Skype of the 10 authors of the chapters in the book to share with you the key ideas and insights into the work and how best we can rethink this legal concept of male authority in the context of equality and justice in the 21st century. This is the 21st century, some of us are forgetting. Many of you today may not be familiar with Musawa, the global movement for equality and justice in the Muslim family. Amidst the relentless bad news coming out from much of the Muslim world and the rest of the world actually, we in Musawa would like to believe that we represent hope. Hope for the future of Islam and what it means to be Muslim today as we reshape and redefine scholarship and activism to bring about an understanding of Islam that upholds equality and justice and the possibility and necessity for reform. Musawa was launched in 2009 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, with about 250 participants from 47 countries, including 32 countries from the Organization of Islamic Conference attending. It was really a wonderful, exciting, empowering, uplifting to this very day when you think about it, when I think about it, um, of five days of just incredible gathering of scholars and activists together committed to bring about change in the Muslim world. We came together because we wanted to tell the world and we wanted to tell our leaders that we will no longer accept the use of Islam to justify discrimination against women. We made a conscious decision to call this movement that we're trying to build in the Muslim world, Musawa, equality. It is an unambiguous assertion that today, in the 21st century, there cannot be justice without equality. And by equality, we do not mean that men and women are the same and must be treated the same. I'm always astonished when people say, oh, is that what you want? You know, We subscribe to the concept of substantive equality, which ensures that women, all women, including Muslim women, enjoy equality in opportunities, equality in accessing those opportunities, and equality in results and benefits. And that the state, our government, is obliged to recognize the differences between men and women and level the playing field and take action to ensure that all laws and policies, even when they are made in the name of Islam, include a gender perspective and uphold equality and justice in substance and in outcomes. Musawa was initiated by Sisters in Islam, the Malaysian women's rights group that has been engaging with Islam from a rights perspective since 1987, way before the rest of the Muslim world and the rest of the world woke up to the impact of political Islam on women's rights and human rights. The pioneering work of Sisters in Islam eventually generated much global interest in the context of rising conservatism and politicization of Islam, 
And as women's groups in many parts of the Muslim world faced tremendous opposition to their demands for law reform and found themselves even having to withstand the attempts to roll back the rights that they had gained in earlier years. Very often, Muslim women who demand justice and equality and want change to discriminatory laws and practices are told, this is God's law. It is, it is divine and therefore not open to negotiation and change. To question, challenge, or demand reform will supposedly go against Sharia. We can have faith in God and lead us astray from the straight path. We are often accused of being westernized elites, anti-Islam, anti-Sharia, women who have deviated from our faith, our aqidah and our iman are weak. Reports are made against us to the police, to the religious authorities to take action against us, to silence us, to charge us for insulting Islam, to ban our groups. But we will not be silenced or intimidated. As activists, we all know that in order to bring change, we, will, we must, must not be afraid to speak the truth as we see it, to be angry in the face of injustice, to take difficult positions and to be marginalized and condemned. For many of us, it is an article of faith that Islam is just, that God is just. If justice is intrinsic to Islam, as our leaders like to tell the world, then how could injustice and discrimination result from the codification and implementation of laws and policies made in the name of Islam. This is the 21st century. We assert again and again that there cannot be justice in the world without equality. We live in a world today where women's rights are considered part of human rights where modern constitutions of many Muslim countries recognize equality and non-discrimination, where women's daily realities make them the providers and protectors of their families. The continuing discrimination found in family laws in much of the Muslim world today is untenable and indefensible. There is clearly a disconnect between the realities of our lives today and the discriminatory family laws that govern us. This has to end. That was why in 2007, Sisters in Islam and its network of scholars and activists decided it was time for us to come together to build an international movement of scholars, activists, of women's groups in Muslim world that have for decades been working on family law and women's rights in Muslim contexts to share and build scholarship, strategies, and good practices. We spent two years preparing for the launch, developing the theoretical underpinnings and the framework for action for the possibility and necessity for equality and justice in Islam. We felt it was important for us to bring to international attention that there is in fact a paradigm shift already in Muslim theological and jurisprudential scholarship, and that there is the possibility to reconcile the teachings of Islam with human rights, with women's rights. We wanted to build a new discourse and a public voice that assert equality is possible in Islam and build the momentum to propel our efforts to protect existing rights in Muslim family laws and practices and promote our demands for reform of the discriminatory positions at the national, regional and international levels. At the launch of Musawa in 2009 in Kuala Lumpur, I spoke of what we hoped to bring to the larger women's movement and human rights movement. An assertion that Islam can be a source of empowerment, not a source of oppression and discrimination. An effort to open new horizons for rethinking the relationship between human rights, equality and justice, and Islam. An offer to open a new constructive dialogue where religion is no longer an obstacle to equality for women, but can be a source of liberation. A collective strength 
of conviction and courage to stop governments and patriarchal authorities and ideological non-state actors from the convenience of using religion, using Islam, using the word of God to silence our demands for equality. And a space where activists, scholars, decision makers, working within the human rights framework or the Islamic framework or both can interact and mutually strengthen our common pursuit of equality and justice for Muslim women. Since then, Musawa has gained, it's been five years, six years, Musawa has gained an international reputation for its groundbreaking work in knowledge building, capacity building, and international advocacy. It challenges patriarchal interpretations of the Sharia from within the Islamic tradition. It links scholarship with activism to bring new perspective on Islamic teachings with the objective of inserting women's voices, concerns, and experiences into the production of religious knowledge and legal reform in Muslim contexts. It uses a holistic framework, the Musawa Framework for Action, that integrates Islamic teachings, universal human rights standards, contemporary state constitutions and laws, and the lived realities of women and men to argue for the possibility of reform for equality and justice. In this project, we have spent almost five years to rethink Kiwama and Wilaya, the notion of male authority over women in Muslim legal tradition. In key aspects of its design and research processes, this initiative reflects the Musawa belief that the production and sharing of knowledge must be participatory and interdisciplinary. Recognize non-traditional forms of expertise, not least the women on the ground impacted in many adverse ways by discriminatory laws and practices made in the name of Islam. And in our search for answers, the questions we must ask must begin from context rather than the text. We believe that in this way, the knowledge produced will be grounded in the lived realities of women and men. Such realities then inform the approach to the text. We're looking forward to today to share with you the key insights from this research initiative. And today actually is just a sharing of the first key component of the Musawa Research Initiative, the theoretical part of it. The second component is the Global Life Stories Project. Mulki will share a little bit about that um, later in the day, but there will be a huge um, um, a book um, publications that will come out that you know, we have um, participants from 12 countries taking part in this where we document the realities of women's lives and how Kiwama and Wilaya are impacting their lives on the ground on a daily basis. So we'll be sharing um, that, the, those case study, studies. And the third component of the Kiwama and Wilaya project is really creating spaces and forums for forging new understandings um, on Kiwama and Wilaya, you know, with the groups taking part in the project in different parts of the Muslim world. Ladies and gentlemen, besides the work in knowledge building, Musawa also works in two other key areas, capacity building and international advocacy. Our seven day short course called Islam and Gender Equality and Justice exposes women's rights activists to how knowledge is produced in the Islamic tradition by examining the methodology and conceptual tools used to build the interpretive and legal traditions in Islam. Participants learn how the Quran is interpreted, how hadith is transmitted, how fiqh is constructed, and explore the possibilities of constructing new understandings to deal with our changing times and circumstances, and develop action plans on strategies for reform, and building a voice and culture of public debate on matters of religion. Many find the course empowering and transformative. Some of them are actually here because they're studying here or working in London, as it builds their knowledge and confidence to critically speak out on the impact of laws, policies, and practices justified in the name of Islam, especially on women's rights and fundamental liberties, and build a new public voice of women demanding an alternative understanding of Islam 
that recognize equality and justice in the context of the realities of our lives today. In the past 16 months, Musawa has trained over 100 women's rights activists and policy makers in this I Engage course, that's what we call it, for participants from Afghanistan, Maldives, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Somalia, Somaliland, and Uganda. A training for women's rights activists in the MENA region will be held later this year. And more demands, we need to cope with more demands for the training. In the third um, area, key area of our work, is um, international advocacy, where Musawa is engaged deeply with the CEDAW process, Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against um, Women. We did a major research on CEDAW and Muslim family laws, you know, whether, they could, whether we could forge common ground, where we critically examine how governments from major OIC countries use Islam to justify their reservations and their non-compliance with their treaty obligations. And we critique their approach and offer the Musawa approach to argue for the possibility of equality and justice and reform of Muslim family laws. This report in both English and Arabic is actually available on the Musawa website as with other Musawa publications. We are also engaged with a constructive engagement process in Geneva the governments are held accountable to their treaty commitments. And we work closely with NGOs on the ground in providing them inputs into their shadow reports and also their lobbying in Geneva to bring critical inf information on the situation on the ground to the CEDAW committee. Last year, Musawa submitted six thematic reports on Article 16 of CEDAW on marriage and family for Bahrain, Qatar, Iraq, Mauritania, Syria, and Brunei. Those were the Muslim governments that were reporting before the CEDAW committee um, last year. These reports document evidence of discrimination and harm in the lived realities of women and children, challenge state parties' understandings of Islam with alternative rights-based discourse, and link the discrimination against women to the structural roots of inequality in Muslim family laws. We are now tracking how the CEDAW committee language has begun to change during the constructive enge engagement process and the conceptual language and tools they're using to challenge governments now that fly the flag of religion to justify why they cannot comply with their treaty obligations. It is time for the international system, for decision makers, for scholars like many of you today, and activists to stop cowering in silence, in fear and ignorance as those in power and authority and ideological non-state actors use and abuse Islam for their own political ends. For Musawa, the journey towards our vision of an Islam that upholds equality and justice is only just beginning. But we are heartened by the support we are getting. From the demands for our trainings from different parts of the Muslim world, to the appreciation as expressed by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and by the CEDAW committee members for our strategic interventions in Geneva and in the UN system, to young Muslim women who tell us, for me that's the most heartening, young Muslim women who tell us how Musawa's work has enabled them to reconcile their faith with their feminism. They can be Muslim and a passionate feminist as well. I hope those of you who are learning about Musawa today will, by the end of the day, feel empowered, hopeful, and strengthened, confident that together we will form a global force for change in the Muslim world. Now it leaves me to express really our deepest gratitude to Lynn Welshman and the Center for Islamic and Middle Eastern Law, SOAS, Faculty of Theology and Study of Religions Unit, University of Helsinki. Right. So thank you all so much for being with us here today and do enjoy the rest of the day, which will be as, you know, hopefully as exciting as we hope it to be.